What's up, y'all? Welcome to Mad Oak Studios in Boston, Massachusetts. My name is Benny Grotto. Today I'm going to be taking you on a little preview demo of the brand new JST Howard Benson Vocals plugin. My buddy Miami over at JST, what's up Miami, asked me to check it out, do this demo video for you guys. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, I haven't I haven't listened to it yet. Uh, we're going to kind of take this journey together. Let's have a listen. So I'm here with PreSonus Studio One and a session opened up from my good friend and collaborator, Carissa Johnson. Um, some of you guys might have heard some of my work with her in um, URM Portfolio Builder, a set of tracks that we supplied a few months back. Uh, anyhow, this is another song that we're working on, kind of somewhere in between the demo and tracking stages. These tend to blur for us a little bit. So anywho, let me loop a section here and then we'll take a listen to Howard's plugin. It's like I'm always on the creator side, creator side. I know it's not actually creator on the other side. Oh, nice interface. Just like turn everything off before I start digging into any one section. Oh, input gain works. All right, good to know. Let's see if the compressor is going it for it. Nice, pretty aggressive. Right, down the back, it's a bit louder. Very cool, very aggressive. Let's check out the grit. And it'll fade from view to the grit's really nice. All right, I'm gonna dial back the compression and rely on the grit for a little bit of the extra attitude. It's nice. All right, now let's take a listen to this EQ. Switch that in. Nice, smooth. Pulls the vocal forward in a nice way. Adds a little bit of air, subtle, smooth, what you want out of a high, sh high shelf on a vocal. And the bottom end here, see if we can get it fat. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna over, uh, overdo it here and see if I can get it to sound bad. that is not doing anything that I don't like. It's really, really solid. It's not boomy, uh, it's it's warming up her voice, adding some chest, it's really good. And the critical mid-range, this is the sort of make or break range uh, for any EQ, especially when you're checking it out on vocals. So let's see what it can do. It's like I'm always on the creator side, creed inside, I know it's not actually creator on the other side. And it'll I'll dial back the low end a little bit. Good, and good presence. Not harsh. It's kind of helping her voice sit up on top of the track a little bit. I'm digging that a lot. All right, so let's check out this multiplier function. I'm going to solo the vocal to hear it a little more clearly. Oh, nice. And it'll fade from so some stereo widening. If these boots keep running and kind of a pitch shift effect. Sounds like. Just adds a little width and dimension. Just here in context. Much. Great. I love it. Now you can really hear the vocal getting bigger and sort of more present, uh, starting to sound really polished. We're only about 
halfway through the the plugins offering. So that's that's kind of nice. Let's check out the width control. And again, I'm gonna solo uh, Chris's vocal here. If these boots keep running See what it does. Never stop. Holy, okay. I know, I know, I know. I won't, I won't, I won't. Let it get the best of me. Let it take the rest of me. Oh, no. So that's adding a ton of width. Green inside. I know it's not actually green. This is one of those little goes a long way kind of effects. If these boots keep running and never stop, I the mono the low end here is very powerful. That seems to focus it nicely. Green inside, I know it's not actually greener on the it's other that. side. Oh, yeah, it's good. And it'll fade from view tomorrow. Here it is in context. If these boots keep running and never stop, Again, just adding a little width, a little dimension, some size. I won't, I won't, I won't. Let's bypass the whole Let plugin. <laughs> you miss it when it's gone. You really do. All right. Let's check out this echo. I have every echo in the world. Plugins and, and outboard and all that stuff. So I'm going to see. I'm going to be picky here. I do like the, I like the graphic quite a lot. The swirling effects is really nice. Okay, that's cool. Let's lo-fi it. Cool. See what mono mode does. Nope, boring. We like stereo. This is good. This is really cool. Let it get the best of me. Let it take the rest of me. Wow. That's great. That swirl is fantastic. Pass the whole plugin. Come on. Where did it all go? All the magic is gone. We're happy again. Let's check out space. Ah. Frankly, a lot better than I expected it to be. I don't know that we need maximum length. Let's dial that back a little. It's pretty. If these boots keep running and never stop Yeah, so short adds a nice kind of roomy vibe and just a little bit of space and air. You can get a little weird with it if you want. A little artsy. And go big. It still sounds good. It's smooth. Um, that's really nice. So, that gives us a pretty comprehensive overview of what this thing is going to do for us on a lead vocal. And it's good. It's damn good. It's fantastic. Um, but let's see what it does maybe on a drum kit. This is, now this is a stereo submix that I've made. Um, we haven't done the actual drums for this track yet. I had a kit set up at the studio. I just laid down something to basically keep time and submixed it to stereo just to kind of keep it out of the way. So. You know, nothing fancy going on, but I am keen to see what the compressors and EQs might sound like. Particularly this compressor, since it does a pretty cool aggressive thing. Really liking this grit control a lot in general. It sounded great on the vocals. It's sounding cool here too. Um, Lo-fi. See what the CQ does. Oh, okay. I see. So um, the EQ circuit needs to be engaged for the lo-fi to work. That's a nice effect though. That's the kind of thing that you could automate um, in and out to quickly do that sort of tin can am radio sort of sound you know boom very cool uh, how about you it's still got that smooth high end and one of the things that I like about this is the gain I 
think you'd call it the logarithmic value of this knob seems well chosen. It's like the lower ranges of the of this gain pot here kind of respond more slowly in a good way so you can get finer control down here at the lower parts of the range, which is very useful for making kind of more subtle tweaks instead of just cranking it all the way. You know, you can fine tune it a little bit more, which is nice. See about maybe cutting some of that boominess if this thing will do the trick. It's not. The frequency doesn't reach down quite low enough to grab the boom in that kick drum. Again, on, on vocals, that wouldn't really be an issue, but we're trying to really put this thing through its paces here. So we'll. That's nice. Good smooth cut. It's not thinning things out unduly kind of just fixing that rumble that is um, in the drum recording of mine. The hands of drum will never hold me still. I don't know it's actually pretty cool. It's nice. Keen to see what the reverb does. I want this. Nice, very airy. Let's go to more of a room sound though. Pretty cool. I, won't, I, won't, I, won't. I like that. Alright, thank you, Howard Benson Vocals, for being effective on the drums as well. Uh, let's try it on the piano too. This is a um, an unfinished piano track, but it's kind of perfect for what we're looking for, especially if we want to get into this. This is exactly the uh, the way I was planning on treating this piano at some point. Um, this is just a MIDI track that I intend to replace with the real piano, but for our purposes here, we'll get the job done. Again, that smooth bottom end is not getting boomy. It's really controlled. Actually, let's do this too. Yes. Listen to that sustain. Turn up the grit. Get a little bit of like a lo-fi quality to it. That's filling out. That's filling out the mix really nicely. I like that a lot. Maybe the um, piano's not going to get retracted after all. Let's see what this limiter does. I'm not sure if I'm quite hitting it hard enough. There it is. Loving that on the piano. Wow, that is fantastic. Adding such a nice space and dimension, um, just having it on the piano alone, it really opens the chorus up in a cool way. I'm gonna bypass that, play it back again. Just miss that expansive kind of quality back in. I love it. That's great. So there you have it. The JST Howard Benson vocals plugin. I love that it sounds great on vocals. That's kind of a given considering the pedigree, but it really still impressed me with the, the smooth sound of the EQ. That grit feature was really great. 
the width and, and doubling effect controls, you know, they range from subtle to pretty extreme, but they, they managed to sound natural somehow. That swirling delay was great. The reverb is huge. Kind of a one-stop shop for anything you'd be needing to look for with vocals. What really stands out for me is uh, how well it handled the other instruments, uh, particularly the piano. I, I thought it added a huge amount of size, expansiveness, depth, all that good stuff. There's a lot of plugins out there that claim to be sort of a one-size-fits-all uh, solution, and very few of them deliver. This is one of a small handful of plugins I found that seems to do what it says it's doing, which is give you a ton of control and offer you everything you need to finish off a sound without really giving you the opportunity to make it sound bad. Um, you'd have to work pretty hard to make this one sound bad. So the Howard Benson vocal plugin from Joey Sturgis Tones is a winner. Thanks, you guys. Again, I appreciate you sending it to me and you out there watching at home. Can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it and get to check it out. Uh, appreciate you watching. Hope to see you again. Happy mixing. And um, have a great one. It's good to see y'all. Thanks again.